Hi everyone! Let's try to write another shader to enhance our graphics, for example the background of a scene in a game. I recently made a video about the emboss filter, which is quite similar to the effect I want to implement today, but this time I'll show a shader that may not look as flashy, but can be written in one line and certainly has other good qualities. Let's get started. So I will create a new scene and insert a prepared texture into it, which will create a sprite 2D node. I will then adjust its parameters and add a shader material as usual. So let's right click sh uh, scenes and create a new scene. I'll call it, let's say, lino cut. I think the final effect would vaguely resemble this technique. Well, and now here's the prepared uh, texture, drag it into the scene, select the node and as usual transform position to 0, 0 and offset centered off. Very well. well, let's show it here and the shader of course, so material, uh, new shader material, click in new shader, line cut GD shader canvas item put it to the shaders folder and create and click to open in the editor and there it is so let's get rid of everything we don't need here i mean the vertex and light function so only the fragment function remains very well so when i was making the video about the emboss filter i used three uniform parameters to set up the shader this time we will only need one I will call it bump because the resulting effect vaguely resembles bump mapping, a technique for simulating bumps and wrinkles on the surface of an object. So let's edit here a uniform float bump with a hint range and the initial value let's set to 50 and the hint range <coughs> would be from 0 to 100 and point one step is okay very well and now the fragment function at the beginning i said that the calculation would be done in one line but for better clarity i will split it into two it's not that big of a difference first i'll write the code and then I'll explain it so right here let's define float g uh, as for gray because the effect would be basically in a grayscale and we take the pixel from the texture using the function texture and uv coordinates and now since we want to assign that to a float and texture function returns a vector 4 we'll take only the red component and finally color would be the bump value multiplied by vector 4 which is composed of functions dfdx <coughs> DF applied on g minus dfdy applied on g uh, sorry here semicolon and that should be it wait for it okay i think it's too intensive let me find the shader parameter and decrease the bump value very well so the first line is probably clear from our texture we take the color of the current pixel and as i said we are only interested in its red component which we'll use um, in the second line to calculate what could be called a color difference in the same way the green or blue component could be used or the arithmetic mean of all three at the end of the video, I can try to see how the effect changes with these modifications. And now the second line. I mentioned the dfdx and dfdy functions in the video where I created the plasma effect. And you might remember that we used these functions there to achieve a somewhat glossier and more plastic-like image. In this tutorial, the difference in partial derivatives, these functions, determines the color difference in a certain direction and that is what results 
in what you are currently seeing. This effect is interesting on its own, but it can, uh, we can achieve an even more intriguing result when we combine it with the original image, as I showed at the beginning of the video. This will be very easy to arrange because you already you have surely noticed that we've been working with vector 4 the whole time, right here. Uh, vector 4 the whole time, so this time I am not setting the alpha channel to 1 for all pixels. These gray areas, right here and at the edges, are actually transparent. So let's see what happens if we add the value of the original pixel on the second line. So it would be here and simply I can copy and paste this one texture UV plus the bump. Okay, wait. Very well. And when I reduce the bump parameter even more, now it looks just like at the beginning of the video. And I would say it's a very nice result. As I mentioned a moment ago, we can use the green or blue component instead of the red one. It probably depends on which component is dominant in the specific image. Let's give it a try. So I will change this to G and wait. Yeah, it's very similar, of course, or B. It should be similar as well. Very well. Let's get back to R. And if we are not sure, we can use the average value of all three. However, we won't call the texture function three times, of course. Let's do it like this. So first I will just grab this and cut it out and call it vector4. Pixel is this value from the texture. So we would have pixel here and we would have pixel here and now it would be pixel r plus pixel g plus pixel b and let's make an arithmetic mean so divided by three okay wait for it yeah i would say there is not much of a difference but if we play with the bump value we can easily achieve exactly what we want. Of course, further experiments are up to you. You could, for example, try subtracting the effect from the original pixels to see if you prefer that, like this. Let's subtract uh, minus. Uh huh. It's very similar. It was just somehow shifted. What if we use a multiplication? Okay, this is definitely completely different. Yes, somehow maybe more artistic. Uh, okay, let's get back to the addition, which was probably the best. Alternatively, uh, instead of using the difference of partial derivatives, this part, we could use the f with function, which is essentially a shorthand for the sum of the absolute values of the partial derivatives. This approach will make the result less like an emboss filter and will emphasize color changes more. So vector 4 and simply f with, uh, I'm missing a bracket, okay, wait, yes, this is it, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, isn't it? If you just fine tune that a little bit or even more. Personally, I prefer the original effect anyway. It's more, how should I say, artistic. So if I wanted to, for example, hang a painting on the wall in a game, I might highlight it using this method. And that's all. Thank you for watching. I would say that this effect is quite useful, especially considering the simplicity of the corresponding shader code. And of course, it can also be used for post-processing the entire screen, which can interestingly enhance the look of 3D games. So that's it for now. Thank you for every like and comment. Have a great time and see you in the next video.